What's going on guys? I hope you're doing great. Today we've got a pretty big video planned, a lot of things going on. First though, I cannot believe we're almost to a thousand subscribers. That actually kind of blows my mind. So if you're enjoying the content, like and subscribe. Today we're going to be redoing the Ranchu tank and giving them the proper substrate so that they don't kill themselves. Because we don't want these guys to kill themselves. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. This dude's wild. Look at him. And then we're gonna be fixing up this plant rack for all of the aquarium plants that I'm planning to sell this year, like I did last year, as well as some house plants. We're starting some seeds for the outdoor garden today. And we're gonna be making polycarbonate tops for all of the fish tanks on the breeding rack. Day has finally come for an update to the Ranchu 54 gallon corner bow front tank. And for the last few months, we've had them in here with this relatively small sized gravel. It's been fine for the first few months. One is just beginning to be big enough to start fitting the pieces of gravel in their mouth. And what I definitely do not want to happen is for them to accidentally swallow some. So even though I should have used sand in the beginning, you know, when we first bought them, they were very small. So this is the first one. Let me show you the second one. Now he's kind of being lazy right now. He's not the best swimmer. And as you can see, even though I've been hand feeding him uh, every day and I put a sheet of nori in here for both, of, he's, he's hiding now. I put a sheet of nori in here for them both almost every single day, along with goldfish flakes, which he eats. I also supplement with some uh, frozen food, but uh, he just, he's not getting as much food as the other goldfish. You took my only food. It's mainly because I think he's just not the best swimmer. It's either that or some kind of internal parasite. So if I can't get him to gain size in the next few weeks with basically, I'm gonna have to consistently hand feed him every single day. We're gonna probably try to treat him for something internal parasites because I mean, we bought these two almost the same size. Uh, and this one is freaking huge. Look at that gut. But look, fat, look, here's the deal. Tiny guy. Like you can barely see his bulge. He, they should have a bulge, big bulge, and no bulge. We need to get you a bulge, okay? Also, a lot of diatoms. We have no algae eaters in this tank, so we definitely, in the near future, have got to get some kind of pleco uh, or some kind of algae eater. I wanted to get a pleco, haven't found any cool ones yet, so we're gonna wait until we find a cool one. But for today, we're gonna be taking all the rocks out, replacing with sand, and uh, putting We'll put the big rocks back in, probably about the same, the same way they are now. Basically, we need to get the sand in there so they can be away from this gravel. These are not the most intelligent fish and they are bound to swallow some of the stuff sooner or later. And I don't want them to die. So I'm gonna save about 20 gallons of this water to put back in because the water I'm gonna use is well water and it's gonna be pretty cold. There is a heater in there, but just so we don't create too much of a temperature swing, we're gonna reuse some of the water. Also, quick update. This is not supposed to be part of this video, but look at the hammer. We finally got it. We finally have, I think, figured out what the problem has been. I will tell you guys what I've done in the next video, but this is looking so much better, like 10X better. Also, corals from the last video, doing great. Blasted looking great. Mushrooms, we now have approximately four Recordia yumas looking great. Green star polyp exploding. These guys spreading too. The anemone has moved from there to back there, whatever he's doing. The plating Monty cap is like at least four times the size as it was from um, pretty recently, about a month ago, maybe two months ago. And it's also secured itself to this rock, which is great. Pavona doing good as well. Micromusa doing good. It's actually pretty poofed up right now. These are spreading off the rock as well. Colors on these guys are looking really nice, spectacular. And the Bernardopora, some of the colors coming back and I'm starting to see some nice uh, fluorescent polyps in there as you can see a lot better at night um, with a flashlight. But uh, if you look really closely, you can see in there, it's actually looking a lot better. I've been supplementing, so I'll tell you guys about the supplements in the next video. But uh, we're not 100% there yet, but it's definitely getting some color back and the polyps are looking better. And one more thing, this guy will be the focus of an upcoming video as well. Brand new beta, we'll have to uh, really get this lighting perfect for this fish tank we're gonna make. This is just the uh, temporary holding tank. Now this fish in the fish tank he's gonna go into is going to be probably one of the coolest tanks that I've made. It's very interesting and it's gonna be uh, Brittany's idea. So we're gonna be executing her idea. It's gonna be kind of more of a girly tank, but in a, in a way that I can also appreciate. So whatever he's trying to do against the backside is uh, unlike him. I don't think he likes the camera. He's usually out in the front. So we'll leave him alone. Back to the video. Let's uh, suck this water out. using this algae clip like every day. 
All the white clouds are doing really well in this tank too. It's hard to tell if they're breeding. Um, I imagine that if they are breeding, the uh, goldfish are eating the eggs or the babies, which is okay. I think we'll go ahead and try to catch the ranchies first. Yeah. That dude's fast when he wants to be. Of course, the little guy's at the very back. This water is not bad at all. Look at the color of this water. This is well water and this has been in here with goldfish. I mean, this water is crystal clear. Catch the white clouds now. Is that all? That was not hard. These are not hard fish to catch. They all stay at the top in the middle. Cool. I kind of forget how many we started with before. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I don't remember if that's as many as we had before, 15. I feel like we had more than 15. But this is how many's left, unless I missed seven here, which I may have. We'll see. We have 15 white cloud mountain minnows, two ranchies. We're gonna take out all the rocks, but put back in these small rocks and the large ones, but not the gravel, obviously. So uh, I'm gonna finish taking out two more buckets of water. We're gonna move these fish out of the way. as I thought. I thought those were gonna be like really heavy. Here, duckweed, duckweed, duckweed. Oops. I think we're gonna just do one bag. I rinsed this stuff a lot. That's still uh, very milky. I think I'm going to drain that out, not use that. Milk was a bad choice. That's a better place to start from. Now we're gonna try to do these rocks without somehow doing something very bad. I'm gonna get some of this water back in the tank and then we're gonna fill it up the rest of the way. And then since that'll be pretty cold, we'll probably have to uh, turn the heater on, let that run for a little bit and get that up to temperature and get these guys back in their tank.
while. So if you didn't know, I sell aquarium plants, just a few different kinds, um, mainly red root floaters. At least I sold these over the last year or so. And during the off season, like during the winter, uh, it's not as easy to ship the plants because you have to have you know heat packs and, and stuff to insulate the plants from the weather. And I kind of decided I just didn't want to ship over the winter. So um, I haven't been doing a lot with my plants. And if you're able to see, which I'll show you, we're gonna be working on this plant rack, getting this all fixed up for being able to sell more plants this upcoming year. And if you guys want, you can purchase plants from me. But unfortunately, some of them went without enough water for a little bit and, you know, the ones in the tubs did fare a little bit better of being neglected, like some of them still look really, really nice. Not too bad. Some of them are okay. This one could be a little bit more humid in here. There'd be a few more leaves in the stems if it was a bit more humid. But uh, yeah, some of these, like, we got some... Oh, wow. We've got some uh, flowers coming on. Wow, I've never actually seen this before. Look at that. Wow. Anyway. We've got some, uh, a couple different kinds of grasses and uh, Monte Carlo. This was doing really well. And then I left the top ajar, slightly open to the air one day. It got a little dry, so we lost some of this, but uh, we've got even more plants up on top. The majority of my sales actually came from this bin of red root floaters, which is obviously no longer, but it was completely full of red root floaters. Over time, I learned that this really wasn't the best way to grow them, essentially. Um, red root floaters and most floating plants grow better when they're uh, around fish. When I accidentally had snails in here, the red root floaters were growing like crazy because the snails would eat you know, some of the algae that would form, the snails would poop, the red root floaters would have a, a nitrogen source, and they did really well. But long story short, I didn't want snails in here because I wanted to sell snail-free red root floaters. So kind of after I got all the snails out, then the health of them kind of wasn't as good as it used to be and they weren't growing so well. We'll probably end up growing more red root floaters on the plant rack over there as well as some other different kinds of floating plants. In addition to fixing up all of these uh, bins with aquarium plants in it, we're actually gonna start some seeds for the garden up on the very top row. And we're gonna use a couple of these uh, extra greenhouse containers to put some of the seeds in that we're gonna start. We'll consolidate some of these aquarium plants that I don't really, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing growing in here anymore. We'll consolidate all this down, clean it up, start some seeds on top. And then all of these plants down here, we're also going to be, um, we're gonna be working towards selling um, some somewhat common, somewhat popular houseplants on eBay and maybe another platform as well. So we're, I think we're gonna move these three tubs on the bottom and then have the houseplants that we're growing out on this middle rack. So we'll have aquarium plants on tubs in the bottom, house plants to grow out and sell in the middle, more aquarium plants, and then we're gonna have garden plants started up on the very top. We're getting to the point in the season where if you're gonna start your garden plants indoors, this is the time to start some of these plants. So we get about six different ones and works out perfectly because this rack holds six trays. So we're gonna start these plants in here and then once it's warmer outside, we'll move them outside and then this entire top section again will be open for whatever else you wanna do throughout the year. There's a bunch of cobwebs in here. We're gonna clean out the cobwebs. I've gotta put one more of these lights up here so we can have this. These lights were just for the red root floaters when the red root floaters were here. So I'm gonna put another one of these plant lights up here. These have been really excellent plant lights. I'll put links to these in the description and you guys can pick these up. They kind of just have different mounting options, but you know, you just hang them on the a shelf. Really nice output. I would suggest maybe getting a dimmer in case you uh, can't move your plants further away. Like this is some strong output here, but uh, these Amazon LED lights work really well. Link in description. I'm gonna put one more up here and then we'll have this whole row lit for the indoor plants.
We're actually planting food. I've no idea what the food is. I finally managed to pick up something that I've been wanting for almost, probably close to a year now. Some tops for the breeding rack tanks. I basically wanted something to stop the tanks from evaporating. I'm currently making some RO water and working on filling these back up. This 40 gallon uh, managed to go definitely below halfway. And that was over the course of maybe a couple weeks. So the level of evaporation in this room is pretty severe. It's been pretty cold outside, uh, but this room is heated, so the, the humidity in this room isn't really that high, and so the tanks just evaporate like crazy. Shrimp tank in the end, I filled up nice and high. These are doing good, but uh, for all the, f all the fish tanks on this breeding rack, they need tops, and they needed tops bad, because it was uh, this corners of the room are starting to get some condensation, and I don't want mold in here. Occasionally, you'll find someone who's like breaking down a greenhouse and is selling these, sh these panels. A lot of times, they're pretty dirty. Over time, the sun will discolor them, make them not so transparent and not something you really want to use for an aquarium. Maybe for a greenhouse, but not for an aquarium. Um, and look, plastic should be relatively cheap. I mean, there's not a lot of difference between this sheet and plastic water bottles. This was close to $100 before the scamdemic around a couple of years ago, you know. The prices of most building materials were pretty low. Plastic, wood, metal, all basic building materials was fairly low but I really didn't want a full sheet. They don't sell the smaller sizes in the store that I have near me, so I had to go with the full sheet, and that was about $90, was $96, $93, something like that. $93 for a sheet of plastic. That's crazy, but I wanted it, and it's, uh, if I went with glass tops, it would have been cheaper and nicer, but it's slightly more work to cut, and I know if I have glass tops on this breeding rack, I would have found the chance to break them over time also it's a lot easier to drill into. It'd be really easy to have in the back of these tanks a little hole somewhere in the back. I might do two sheets. So we'll do like, I'll make a sheet that fits the top of the tank. And I'll probably cut it in half and then I can put a little finger hole in the front so we can move it back. And in the back, I'll have another hole where we can stick in some like plants that we're trying to root. And that'll be a lot easier than what I've been doing, which is like just sort of hanging them off the side. Then they fall in and they drown and they get all soggy and die. So that's not good. So we'll do some um, hydroponics with these tops too. Not exactly sure how I'm gonna cut this thing, but basically a lot's happening in this room, so there's not a lot of free space, and I cleaned off my stainless steel counter. I feel like we might have to somehow do it on here, lay it out, cut it off the edge. I'm gonna set the camera down on the tripod, and uh, I'm gonna measure out dimensions for all of these tops, and we'll see how easy it is to cut this thing. Shouldn't be too bad. Sharp knife, razor blade, something like that. Some kind of a straight edge to make nice lines, and that is probably all it's gonna take, so we'll get going. I've got my measurements, and I need four, 
five, six. Well, if I'm gonna fill this rack up, I need, I need eight 10 gallon tops and I need one 40 gallon top and then the rest will be for whatever random stuff I need tops for. I'm gonna somehow try to remember uh, and mark which side is which. This side, like this side, says that's the side that the UV light is supposed to pass through first. So I bet there's a UV coating on only one side. That would be the way that I would want it facing up. I'd want that side facing up so that it, uh, that the aquarium lights don't cause the plastic to degrade as much, I guess, if that's how that works. That well, sounds like you're really onto something. Things to 17 by 34 and 7 eighths. All right, I think the sharpest knife I have out here is probably an X-Acto knife. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna go this way first, because I think it's gonna be easier to go that way since there's lines in it. I can just follow the line. Line her up. box cutter. Why do I not have an actual box cutter right now? Oh, I broke the tip off. I cannot confirm that a box cutter is the best way to cut this. So if you guys know of a better way to cut this, please leave a comment in the description. For everyone watching, this seems like a very bad way to do it. I mean, it's like it worked, it's fine, but like don't cut your hand off. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's end this video with a look at the koi pond or the goldfish pond. These guys are doing fantastic in here. Let's put some food in here. These new four fish did really well after we moved them out of quarantine. Awesome guys, look at these. Oh my God, look at that poop. What the?
I treated these guys for worms, so I'm not sure what this guy's up to. That's ridiculous. Just kidding, I'm not shocked. He has this every single day. I'll catch you guys in the next video.